Money in Excel. Create an income statement from bank data using pivot tables. Get ready because it's time to excel in money using Money in Excel. Here we are in our Money in Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we set up the Money in Excel template and then linked it up to our financial institution. Once you have Excel open, you can set up the template by going to the File tab on the left-hand side, going to the New option, then you're looking for the Money in Excel, which might be up top or down below down here. You do typically need some type of subscription model with Microsoft Office in order to access Money in Excel. Going back to our tab, we then pulled this data from the bank. So we now have our financial transaction data. Now we are imagining taking that data and forming it in different ways, primarily thinking about taking the banking data and putting it together in such a way that we want to put an income statement together for a business, possibly in a situation where we have transactions that are both business and personal, possibly something like gig work or something like that, that I need to pull out, extract, the business information so that we can put it together for tax preparation purposes or something of that nature. So what we've done is we've categorized these items, we took the data, we categorized it using Excel's category feature, which is quite nice. It can, it can help us to categorize this better. We then added the subcategories, which we hadn't used when we, when we then did our adjustments or our tables. We basically did our table format to make an income statement last time and just use the category breakout. If you use pivot tables, it's a lot easier to then take into consideration subcategories. And so we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail uh, at this point in time. So then we copied this data and we put it into another tab so we, didn't, we don't mess anything up. We just copy the data and now we have it in this tab. And then I, I deleted the, some of the information we don't need. And so now we just got basically our, our data here that we can then convert into an income statement this time doing it in a bit more sophisticated way with the pivot tables. So to do that, I'm gonna close this tab to the right because I kinda of need that space for the pivot table area. And notice again, last time we did this in a, in a way that's perfectly fine, but a little bit more clunky. The most clunky way, but kind of the easiest way in this tab to the right, we just took this information and then cut out what we didn't need and just trimmed it down to the income statement that we did need. And then we just broke this information down into an income statement. So that's one way you could do it. We got a little bit more, what I would think a, a way that's not a little better, which is going to be this tab where we didn't delete the information. We put in a table, which gives us a little bit more security that we don't delete the information. And then we could do a similar kind of process to, to uh, pull out the data. So now we're going to do the pivot table, which gives us a lot more flexibility to move these different, these different fields around. So I'm not a pivot table expert. So if, you, if I don't do things quite as efficiently as you would do them, then forgive me, but I can make a basic pivot table here. And so that's what we'll do now. Basic pivot table is not too difficult. So what we'll do is we'll highlight the whole data. I'm going to take all of this data again. And then we're just going to insert a pivot table. So we'll go back up top. We're going to go to the insert tab. And then we're going to go to a pivot table. So we'll go to a pivot table right here. And it's going to select. So it's going to add then a pivot table for this range of data. We could put it in a new worksheet or the existing worksheet. I like to do the defaults here and put it into a new worksheet. So I'm going to make a new worksheet with our pivot table. Nothing is on the left-hand side. We have a screen to the right-hand side, which could, looks kind of like the Money in Excel type of screen. The Money in Excel type of screen is using some features that are similar, basically, to a pivot table. And so now, as we populate this data down below, we will then be populating the, the, the pivot table. So notice these are these are basically the columns that we have, the date, the merchant, the category, the subcategory, the amount, and the category type. And then down below, we've got filters, we've got columns, we've got rows, we've got values. Now, if you just click off the ones that are most obvious here, so the ones that we really want are the categories because those are our accounts, and I just click it, it pulls it down to the rows, which makes sense. So I'll just use the default there. And then if I then select the amount, which is the other one, which would be the most obvious, then it's going to give us that in the values, which makes sense because, of course, that column has the values in it. And then you can see it basically makes a nice little income statement for it. It breaks it all down and makes a, a nice income statement for that. And that's going to get us down to the 34. Now, notice it's including these items that are personal. I, I really just want this information down here. I'd like to remove these items up top. A couple ways you could do that. I could just copy this data down here. I could just copy that and put it over here and then... 
uh, sum this up and call that good, right? I can call that my income statement equals the sum of these items. And there's my 39202, which I believe tied out to what we had over here, right? The 39, 39202, so that we could do that. But that's not, that's not like as, as neat a way to do it. So what we'll do instead is I'll click back on the pivot table and we could use our filters basically to filter out these top two items. So if I hit this drop down up top, I could say now I'd like to filter it down and I don't want to be including the personal and the transfer information. I just want to start at the income statement and then say, okay, and there we go. And so that's a nice, nice, easy way. Notice how much more not simpler that is than doing the, the tables we did prior, although I, again, pivot tables, although that's pretty simple, it's, it's not as intuitive and you might still be like, I'm not totally comfortable or confident that that number is the right number. You know, maybe you want to add it up with the table or double check it with the table, which I would probably still do uh, myself. So then we said we have that and that that's one way we could break it out. Now you might say, well, then I had these subcategories. What if I want to break it out in a little bit more detail with the subcategories here? So I could then say, okay, let's add then the subcategories. And notice it pulls it down to the rows down below. So now we have the subcategories in the row and we have a nice little breakout here. We got the income. Now the income's on top. Kind of, it, It's kind of like you'd, you'd kind of like to see it the other way around. I think there might be a way to adjust it. But notice you've got these little plus buttons. There's our total income. And there's our income by category, which we had the Amazon, the gig work, and the YouTube and whatnot. There's our bills and then and then... Uh, the, the total bills here. We didn't have any other subcategories for the bills and whatnot. The major subcategories were on our income items. So now the, the subcategories pull in there and that works. That works quite nice as well. You also might say, okay, well, what about this information could be, could be useful for the personal side of things as well. So now notice when I did it more of the clunky way over here, I just deleted all the personal data. Uh, and I might want to use the personal data. Maybe I, if I use a pivot table, then I can take this data and I can sort it on the personal side as well. So I might say, okay, let's let's take a look at the personal stuff going up top and say, I don't want this stuff down below maybe. I just want all the personal data. Let's just take all the personal data up top and say, okay. And there we have it. Now the personal data we had broken out all in the category of personal and then the subcategory is, is the breakout. So we had fast food, insurance, interest income, and W-2 income down here. So it's a little bit backwards because we didn't use like account numbers and, and as we did in the the um, business data. So those are going to be the main uses here. So again, I'll, I'll remove them all. Easiest way to do this would be to you know select the category and then the amount, and that'll typically pull out what you want for the most basic kind of information. Then use your filters. Then use your filters and possibly remove the items that you want that you don't want. So possibly you want all this and not the personal like that or possibly you want uh, the personal and not and not these items and then again you can add the subcategories uh, here and then you could, you could take a look at the subcategories for just the business items or then you can populate the subcategories for the personal i think that would be the, the easiest ways to kind of manipulate this you can experiment with the columns and then uh, the filters up top as well if you so choose but um, these are going to be the most basic type of ways i think you can go about it so i'll basically stop it stop it here on uh, the pivot tables so we have three ways we can we can kind of format this data and you can see how the you know the pivot tables give you a lot more flexibility but if you have the data the raw data then you can go in here and and piece it together and these this information over here will not affect the raw data and remember this is a lot different than on the quickbooks system because in quickbooks you're using the double entry accounting system so the double entry accounting system will basically once you add the data it'll magically pull the information into both either the balance sheet and the income statement, depending on the account category. And then on the income statement, you do have some ways to break out the personal and the business, but you've got to use like classes or something like that to break those two out. Otherwise, you have to put everything that's personal as a draw, which is the easier thing to do, but then you don't get any breakout of the personal data and the same QuickBooks file in that format. And so the double entry accounting system is good, because of course it'll help you to not make mistakes, but in some ways it can be a little bit more difficult. If you have a very small business and you're trying to break out that information quickly and you don't really fully understand the double entry accounting system or bank feeds or you know balance sheet items and income statement items, it may actually be easier to kind of uh, put, put the stuff into, and you're just taking all the information from your bank account 
it might be a little bit easier even to, to populate this in uh, Excel and then use these different kind of formats to carve out uh, your, your income statement. And if you get good at it, then you can use that pivot table, for example, to carve out personal data uh, as well. But as we do it, just remember, it's, not, it's also not a full service bookkeeping system. So if, if you get bigger, if your business does better, you do want to learn the bookkeeping system. You do want to have a double entry accounting system and, and all that kind of stuff as well. So pros and cons of either method.